Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported me by getting my newest graphic novel, My Last Summer with Cass. So happy to hear back from the people who have uh, helped me out by ordering this book. But let's go ahead and get into the video. Today we're going to be looking at how to draw an elderly person's eyes. We're going to start uh, in time lapse by drawing a younger person's eye. Now you're, I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step on this. I've done so many videos on how to draw eyes and I will link to the playlist of them uh, in the description. But today, uh, step by step, we're really going to slow down and show you where do you add all the wrinkles and so forth that make a young person's eye look like an older person's eye. Let's go ahead and get into drawing this one, as I said, all in time lapse. All right, so to begin with, I'm going to keep the camera uh, pulled back so that we can see both of the eyes at the same time. I may zoom in a little later on, but uh, this uh, sort of bold outline of the eyebrow really has to kind of be faded away. And uh, as I suggested, we're going to draw a somewhat uh, thinner version of this eyebrow with, uh, uh, you know, uh, it seems to me the, the hairs have uh, thinned out, some have fallen out. Uh, some people, I suppose, uh, depending on their luck, <laughs> may completely lose their eyebrows altogether. Um, but I'm going to just try to go somewhere between uh, the two extremes here and just sort of suggest that the hairs have uh, begun to thin out just a little bit. One way of... Uh, and, you know, some of this stuff, I think, extends into the realm of cartooning that if you want to uh, draw an older, uh, you know, like a cartoon character of an older woman, uh, giving her really big, thick, dark eyebrows is maybe fighting against that, uh, the image of what we picture in our minds when we think of an older uh, person. So all of this stuff has sort of multiple applications from the highly realistic version uh, to the uh, more cartoony style. I'm feeling now that I actually have already gone too far a little and uh, time to backtrack just a bit. Uh, in any case, now let's move on to uh, getting into the wrinkles, which is where things really get interesting. This line here, this relatively simple line of the upper uh, eyelash, I feel this is one of the major things that starts to change as someone gets uh, older, and, and I do mean sort of almost like elderly. Uh, the kind of eye that I'm drawing here, and I believe the so the eye socket, you know, the bone behind uh, the that surrounds the eye becomes increasingly visible as a person gets older. And so I'm extending this line, and I do believe that this line that we're seeing here does relate to that bone of the eye socket back behind. Um, up here in this area where the eye um, lid line has already been put in place, uh, you're going to find more additional wrinkles forming in this area. Again, you know, different people have uh, different eyes and different skin and so forth. You're going to see a variety of different things happen, but uh, as I studied different photographs, I noticed, uh, certainly among photos of uh, truly elderly people, that you, did, you started to see extra lines in here that you wouldn't uh, for a younger person. Now, uh, there's not a whole lot of space over here, but the, you may start to see lines that extend into the bridge of the nose. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and put a few uh, right there. Just, um, just maybe it's almost as if the facial expressions begin to etch wrinkles into the face and a, a look of concern or anger or whatever. Uh, the, the flesh is bunching together in this area and may, uh, over time, begin to leave lines. Um, I have heard people say, you know, I, I don't want to smile too much because it's going to give me wrinkles. I don't know how much truth there is to that. Um, but anyway, let's move on to this next part. There's going to be a lot of shading in here, but uh, let's go ahead and add eyelashes. And as we uh, hinted at earlier, we're going to have considerably fewer eyelashes. Um, and I'm not going to have them quite as dark. Of course, an older person can put on, um, you know, mascara and uh, 
uh, darken their eyelashes artificially. I wanted this one to not appear to be a, uh, in either case one in which we're looking at a lot of makeup but hopefully more just the natural look of the human eye. So I, I'm, I'm going to kind of maybe stop right there in terms of the number of uh, eyelashes. And um, I'm keeping the camera back because this area over here is going to become quite a big deal. In fact, on the fly, I might sort of shift over just a little bit because these lines are really going to start to uh, fan out here. I suppose I'll just sort of darken this upper eyelash or upper eyelid line just a bit here um, so as to finish off this area but down here this is where you're going to start to see some lines that sort of follow along this this area underneath the eyebrow and the lines the wrinkles begin to curve upward uh, around from the eye almost like a letter C kind of a shape here and then um, Again, depending on the person, you're going to start to see these crow's feet lines um, curving upward and away. There might even be some uh, lines visible right there um, in that area beneath, beneath the eyebrow. And at some point what happens is we get down here just maybe a touch below the eye itself, and this is where the lines kind of flatten out, maybe just go a bit more horizontal. And you guessed it, begin to reverse direction down here, as I said, slightly below where the eye is, and I didn't really notice that uh, until I started studying the photos. Where are the crow's feet located, and where's the sort of center part where it begins to split into the two different areas? This, I suppose, would be related to smiling, do you think? When the person smiles a lot, they start to get a lot of crow's feet. That may or may not be accurate. It's not going to stop me from smiling. Gosh darn it. Um, but that, uh, yeah, this area here, you can really go to town. Um, and, and some people get in, an incredible amount of lines over here. A lot of people, not so much. Um, this area of the tear duct, I think, is pretty consistent between the young eye and the old eye. I don't think it changes too much. I, I did start to wonder if the eye itself starts to open less widely. Um, and I think that probably is the case with some people. I'm not going to do that so much in this drawing. Um, but you could try certainly with cartooning. One way of making a character look older is to make the eyes smaller. Um, and this whole thing of the um, the iris itself I think probably doesn't change too much unless the person's got like cataracts or something like that. I'm going to leave that for later. Let's move on down here to um, the eyelashes of the uh, lower eyelid and these also thinning them out, um, maybe f fewer of them and further between and just really uh, keeping it light for these lower eyelash lines. Now down here is where we see the bags that tend to form under the eyes, and this is one of the major things that we focus on when we think about an older person. Uh, and uh, with cartooning, for sure, you start to put these lines underneath the eyes. And as I studied a bunch of different photos, I noticed that it actually divides into kind of two different areas. Um, there's this one first area that's sort of supporting the underside of the eye, and that one is relatively free of lines. But then there's a secondary area underneath. I'm going to just sort of hint at it here with just a sketchy uh, prop line. This area down here, uh, depending on the person, this area can become quite fractured into a lot of sort of horizontal um, wrinkles, tiny ones, that spread out um, beneath not immediately beneath the eye, but sort of beneath that first bag that forms underneath the eye. Uh, and then that may eventually start to connect into this crow's feet area on the side. Um, and you can throw in one or two lines there. I wouldn't fill all of this area with lines, though I don't think that's uh, quite realistic. And you're probably going to see a little bit of um, a an indication of uh, the socket. Again, I think it's sort of the bone underneath 
um, that's holding the eye in place starts to show through in this area. And a lot of this really becomes a matter of shading. I'm going to do some of this shading real time. I'm sure I'm going to have to kick it into time lapse uh, later on. But as I looked at some photos uh, of the elderly, the eye socket here really can become quite indented and that results in super deep shading in this area in a way that you would never see uh, when the person was young. And so I'm going to go in here and eventually with my trusty black Prismacolor I'm going to go in there quite uh, in quite a dark way. And I'm going to add um, shading all in here. I think the, it, it remains, the location of the shading remains fairly consistent from the young person to the older person. But of course this flash of the underside of the eyebrow um, is considerably less smooth as you get older and so you may uh, want to start making it a bit more mottled. Is, is that the right word? I'm not sure. It's not lines so much but sort of um, different areas of darkness and lightness that suggest it's not quite so smooth. I'm going to go in here and sort of firm up these lines. As I said, in some uh, cases people end up with quite a lot of wrinkles, that are tiny wrinkles that are tucked into this area um, near the tear duct. And um, all of this, you know, if you get really into it, you're going to add shading to almost each individual wrinkle uh, if you want to. That, I think, is best left for time lapse. You might find that this bridge of the nose area starts to sort of darken in and, and have its own area of shade. But you can see it's already looking considerably older as we add uh, this in here. Now in terms of shading beneath the um, eye itself, the sort of the flesh that supports the lower part of the eye, I think this area in here is going to get much more uh, pronounced dark, you know, sort of darker. There, there's much of an more of an area for the shadow to fall with these sort of deeply etched lines and wrinkles and so forth. Um, but this area below also, some people just sort of develop a darkness of the flesh, not so much the you know light and shadow, but more just like the flesh itself starts to get a little darker uh, in these uh, areas. You know, lack of sleep. I'm not sure. <laughs> It starts to show up over time. And uh, yeah, I would say over here we're going to continue adding a bit more shading uh, around this area, sort of upper area of the um, crow's feet. And right in here, you can see here it's nice and shaded in. I think we're going to have a fairly similar thing happen over here. I don't know if you see lots of lines across the eye. Uh, lid itself, the upper eyelid. But certainly this fold of the eyelid really starts to kind of merge with the, this, the eye socket itself and gets, um, as I said, pretty dark in that area. Now the rest of this stuff, in terms of the shading, I think it relates more to just the iris kind of coloring it in almost. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it into time lapse and uh, finish up the shading finish up some of the detail work, and then I'll be back with a few final words. All right, well, I think I've done enough of the shading here on the uh, elderly person's eyes. You can certainly see that, um, you know, putting extra time into it in terms of adding individual bits of shading to each wrinkle uh, can really help in terms of making uh, the final illustration look more realistic. But as I said, some of this stuff just applies to even cartooning and much more simplified versions of drawing elderly people. I hope that you found it useful. But what I want to do now is to pull back the camera and let's see both of these eyes side by side. 
All right, well, there you see it. The ravages of time set upon this person's eye from youth uh, to old age. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Before I go, I always like to say thank you, especially this time to those of you who have got my newest graphic novel, My Last Summer with Cass. But of course, the two pencil method, that teaches you the sort of things you saw me doing uh, in today's video and mastering manga one, two, and three. Really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who choose to support me that way, but let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.